most professionals who are online will have some form of portfolio and Squarespace does a great job at allowing you to display your work in loads of different ways. And one of the ways that it does this is with their portfolio. Now, portfolios are okay in some regards and in others, not so good. So I'm going to take you through the pros and cons. You can weigh it up and then I'm going to show you how to set it up, how to add things to your portfolio and then just allow you to make a decision based on that. Okay, so we've got our site here and we want to add a portfolio to it. So we head up to website and then we're going to click plus up here and we're going to go into the collections and find portfolio. Click on this and then we're presented with a few options. So I'm going to click here and we'll call this portfolio. And you can see now we've got a portfolio where we have these nice hover effects on our stuff. Now, you've got a few options. Well, I think you've got six actually. If you go into edit section, you've got your layout options here. So grid simple, hover, what did I say, six? Ah, oh, I meant five, I meant five. Anyway, you've got grid simple, hover, follow cursor, which is this, which is cool, but I just think the usability is just terrible. Uh, hover fixed, which is this. Then you've got hover background, which is a little bit more, um, I'd say, you know, accessible or usable, but still not brilliant. And then you've got grid overlay, which I find is the coolest one, especially if your work is super visual. So for me as a web designer, I could have screenshots of client sites here and I could also crop it. You know, it doesn't have to be square. I could do three, two standard, which is a little bit better for, you know, fitting on websites. So you could have your websites here and then when the user hovers, it comes up with the project name which is cool now for mobile doesn't quite work the same because you don't have a hover state on mobile this is something that you've got to weigh up when you come to create your portfolio you know do i want people to just see and then click or do i want some form of hover state because this is what happened on my website here because i was like i want people to see the name of you know of the website that i did so in my portfolio what I have is this hover state, but then on mobile, you can see you have the picture and then you have the text and whatnot. But to do that, what you need to do is create your portfolio using a blog section instead, which again is out of the scope. I do have another video on that somewhere on my channel. I'll try and link it below, but that's just something that you've got to weigh up. Now back to this, you've picked, let's say, this uh, grid. You can also play around with uh, the inset margin. You can play with the height of the sections, which make that smaller. You can have more or less columns. I find three columns seems to work well. Horizontal spacing. You can do the vertical spacing, make them super spread out if you wish. Text placement, top left, middle left, or bottom left. I think bottom left looks quite cool, so we'll leave it at that. And then the opacity, you can make it go completely opaque or you can have nothing. So completely up to you how you want to play that. You do have a lot of customization to be fair. So we save this and we exit. And now you can see we've got our portfolio items here. Now the only thing with a portfolio, which I find to be pretty annoying, is if I was to add something here and then I think, eh, okay, I like to look at this as a project. As soon as I click this and hit save, which I have to do, that's it. Like it goes live straight away. There's no draft capability, which to me is insane. I explain this to clients and they're like, we've got a live site. We can't really be working on this and have it live. So again, something else you've got to factor in. It's something that I tell all my clients and I often sway them towards the blog collection setup because it just seems to work better as a portfolio and it gives you that draft option as well. But if you want to stick with it, you absolutely can. Let's just click this. Uh, which one did they even do? Was it project? I don't even know. Maybe it was this one. Click into edit, and then it's just like any page on Squarespace. So you can have like full bleed stuff, which blog posts don't do. So that's quite cool. Then you can have, you know, gallery sections, list sections, anything. Now that is uh, the benefit that you would get with this, because if I go into here, and then if I go into one of my, you know, blog posts or portfolio items, I'll click, edit and then I only have the blog section so I only have this one section uh, where I only have classic editor so 
again, you kind of got to weigh up the pros and the cons between each. Now, once you're happy with this, once you've, you know, you've got all your sections in, your blocks in, whatnot, save, exit. I mean, <laughs> it's live anyway, so it doesn't matter, but that will save your progress. Now, if we go into the back end by clicking the three buttons and then settings, we can edit our thumbnail image here. So you would upload this now with a portfolio. Again, <laughs> another drawback. I'm really talking down portfolios here, but you have to upload an image and it can't be a stock image. So upload, I mean, Squarespace can't tell if it's a stock image that you downloaded and then re-uploaded, but it doesn't let you search for media like it does on a blog post, for instance. Here, you can give it a title, URL slug, you can SEO optimize it, and you can do a social share image. So overall, it does offer you some cool stuff, but if you wanna have, I would say, more granular control over like scheduling, drafts, and a few other bits and bobs, maybe a blog collection is better. But I will leave it up to you. It's not my job to convince you, it's only my job to show you how everything works. So if you found this useful, please make sure to leave a like and hit subscribe. And if you want me to build your Squarespace website, you can get in touch using the links in the description.